welcome to lecture two in vibrations and waves. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about wave interactions. So here the objectives first, we'll try to apply the superposition principle and differentiate between constructive and destructive interference and predict when a reflected wave will be inverted and predict whether a specific traveling waves will be produced by a standing wave and identify nodes and anti nodes of a standing wave. Let's start with wave interference. So whenever you have two different material objects that can never occupy the same space at the same time, so these are uh, this is the phenomena we generally use to describe interference. So because mechanical waves are not matter but rather are displacements of matter, so these two waves can occupy the same space at the same time. So the combination of the two overlapping waves we call that superposition. So there are two types of interferences. One is constructive interference and the other is destructive interference. So the name itself says what it means. So when you take two waves, let's say for example, uh, we have one wave right here and another wave right here. Notice that the point at which they start is exactly the same. Now let's say if this has an amplitude A1 and this has an amplitude A2. So for a constructive interference, the resultant amplitude is the sum of the amplitudes of both waves. So combining these two waves results in a wave that has an amplitude that is higher So it results in an amplitude that is much higher than the original value. So which means you're going to get amplitudes like this. So this amplitude right here. So this amplitude right here is the resultant amplitude, which is going to be the sum of the amplitudes of both waves. So this here represents constructive interference. So in constructive interference, so we have individual displacements on the same side of the equilibrium position add together to form the resultant wave. And the second type is the destructive interference. So destructive interference happens when you have two waves on the opposite sides of the uh, stable. For example, let's say you have one wave starting at the point upward and the other wave starting from a downward trend towards upward. Notice here that if this has an amplitude A1 and this has an amplitude A2, but notice that the starting points are in the opposite directions. So the resultant amplitude will be the difference between the amplitudes a1 minus a2 so what will happen here is that you will have a smaller amplitude in comparison to both so this becomes the resultant a1 minus a2 now if a1 equals a2 then the wave will be flat because there is no uh, resultant displacement at all so this is an example of destructive interference so this is an example of destructive interference. Now let's talk about reflection. So what happens to the motion of a wave when it reaches a boundary? Let's say for example, we have a rope that is tied to a fixed end and one rope where it's tied to a moving end. Now, there are two waves of looking at it. So when you have a free boundary, waves are reflected, which means that they go into the position in the same, dire in the same upward direction and they come back in the same direction upward here. Now, when you have a fixed boundary, the waves generally are reflected and inverted. So when you have a fixed boundary, the wave starts to uh, go in the direction that makes it uh, go in the opposite direction. So what is happening basically here is that the wave motion is continuous, but because the, there is a fixed boundary, it tends to go in the opposite direction. But because of a fixed boundary, so you are going front and reflecting back in the same direction because of the free boundary. So next let's talk about standing waves. So what is a standing wave? A standing wave is basically a wave pattern that results when you have two waves of the same frequency and wavelength and amplitude that travel in opposite directions and interfere. So standing waves generally contain nodes and anti nodes. So let's talk about, let's look at an example of a standing wave. So you have two, two points. So this is an example of a standing wave. So a standing wave, the so this is an artistic representation of a standing wave. So here, remember that both the waves have the same frequency and wavelength. Now the idea here is to remember that there are nodes and anti-nodes in the in place of crests and roughs. So the 
point where there is zero displacement, we call that a node. So all of these points are nodes. And the point with the highest displacement is called as an antinode. So the antinode and node. So standing wave can be differentiated by based on the number of cycles. If both have fixed ends, then the number of cycles of the waves determines the number of nodes in antinodes. So the number of nodes is always plus one to the number of, cycle of cycles of the wave. And number of antinodes equals the number of uh, complete uh, cycles of the standing wave. So only certain wavelengths generally produce standing wave patterns. So the ends of the strings must be nodes because these points cannot vibrate. Now, any standing wave can be produced for any wavelength that allows both the ends to be nodes. So in the diagram, we have two, three different forms. First, we have a standing wave that is uh, just having one, one, two nodes and one anti-node. And you have a standing wave here with three nodes and two anti-nodes. And you have one with four nodes and three anti-nodes. So the one with the one node, two nodes and one anti-node, we call that the fundamental wave or the starting fundamental standing wave. So this is the one that originally creates the one. So from this, the standing wave progresses to higher and higher number of nodes, resulting in multiple frequency patterns. So this is the photograph that shows four possible standing waves that can exist on a given string. So the progression goes from one to the other, always starts from a standing wave with one one specific uh, cycle and two, two, three, four and so on. So this way the progression continues. So with that, we end the topic on standing waves. And with that, we end the lecture on vibrations and waves. I will see you all again in the next.